tell me a little bit about, I know you've got a long history with your personal history and with uh, respect to this record. Tell me a little bit about your past 20 odd years involved with the Bonham. Well, we started looking in 1978 for the Bonham Richard in 79. And then I came back again in 84 and did a, a short search for it. Now I'm back again in, of course, 2003. Of course, we didn't have the technology we have today. And so it was, uh, it was a much more difficult search, and uh, the results, of course, weren't nearly as good. Uh, and then other people have searched for it. Uh, they claim to have found it just offshore, which is impossible, of course, because um, the Richard drifted for 36 hours before it sank. And plus the fact that uh, I think the wreck they found inshore is 90 feet, and the mass on the Richard were 180, so it would have stuck up. But, uh, no, she's out here someplace, but the problem is there's just no information. Jones, none of the crew wrote, you know, like we were 10 miles, 8 miles northeast of the head when it went down. Nothing like that. We just took all the uh, records and sightings we could. Uh, the fact that Jones' fleet much increased their distance. There was a, a sighting that he was seen east-southeast of the head at 10 o'clock and then uh, northeast at 1 o'clock. So what we did to get kind of an idea was uh, in 79, we took our boat, and at the same time on the flood tide, we start drifting, as he would have. And we drifted for 36 hours, which took us about 14 miles northeast of Flamborough Head. So that's an indication of where the fleet might have been. I mean, it's anything could have, you know, made that very winds. Uh, they might have tried to sail it. But uh, that's the only kind of indication we can use to use as a base to work, you know, out from. And then we just start expanding on the area we searched before. And there's no indication. We just It's out here someplace. We don't know where. So we just have to mow the lawn until hopefully we find it. You select what you call your grid, or we call it a ballpark, where you think it might be. And then you position it just like a big, say, a rectangle and like a lawn, and then you start mowing the lawn by going back and forth, back and forth, and then moving, you know, out with each lane that you, you, you know, search in hopes that you'll, you'll stumble across it. It's just like, let's say that you, you throw a rock in the middle of a lawn and you mow until you hit it. You, know. you still don't know where it is, but you know where it ain't. It's just, you know, if we don't find it, I'd like to come back and try again, but it's, uh, it's, it's really difficult. And we've been we've been blessed with good weather, and of course the equipment's working fine. So you know we'll we'll know it if we hit it. But uh, it's just a question of going until you actually cross over. Because if we don't find it here, then it's really a, a crapshoot. Because I can't guess whether it's further the north, further south, further east, west. Who knows? So we just do the best we can and hope for the best. And shipwrecks are interesting, and from the standpoint that. Uh, when you do find them, they're never where they're supposed to be. And, and a lot of people said they're not ready to be found until they want to be found. In the meantime, I formed NUMA, which is the National Underwater Marine Agency, and, and uh, it's a nonprofit foundation dedicated to preserving maritime history by finding the lost ships of historic significance, you know, before they're totally gone forever. And we've been pretty successful. I always said that I'd die happy if I found two wrecks. One was a Confederate submarine Hunley, which I found, and then the other is, of course, the Bonham Richard, which still remains to be found.